hello and welcome to our SPSJ online service this week. Really good to have you joining me. Uh, today we're going to be hearing from Jerry and Sandra as they share a little bit about the work that we're doing with children and young people here in Hereford um, and the Ukrainian um, support project that we're involved in. Really, really good to hear from them um, with some things that we can be praying into as well. And then we're also going to be hearing from my friend Mark, who's coming to share with us the second of our series on showing uh, Jesus is our Lord in our witness. Earlier this year, we had some stuff about uh, Jesus is Lord in our worship. Now we're moving on to our second phase of that. And uh, Mark is going to be sharing with us about that. So those two things to look forward to. Uh, but now let me just pray for us as we begin our time. So as I pray, just take a moment to still yourself, to breathe in and breathe out, to pause from everything else and to come before God. So Lord, as we seek to shape our lives and point our lives towards you, we invite you to be present in us now through your Holy Spirit in your grace and your love. We pray for Mark as he speaks to us and for Jerry and Sandra as they share uh, the work that they and others are doing. Amen. So we're going to hear from Jerry and Sandra now and then uh, we'll have our Bible reading before Mark speaks to us. Hi, Jerry here. So as part of the SPSJ project updates, um, we've got a couple of things that we want to update you with children and youth as well as our Ukrainian project. So in regards to our toddlers group, that is going fantastically. And what we would you like you to pray for is um, expansion of a team. So for more volunteers, that would be wonderful. Um, our children and youth are growing phenomenally on a Sunday morning. Um, we've seen over the last 18 months um, those numbers double, which is fantastic and really encouraging, as well as our team developing as well into a bigger team. And then we are our school. So Heather goes into Bishops and supports Christian Union as part of an ecumenical um, team. But they're now looking to develop that chaplaincy in bishops. So if you can please pray for that. Um, as well as our, we've got an ecumenical youth event on the 20th at Trinity Church. Um, so if you can be praying for that, um, where all our young people are going to be coming together. Uh, Heather's launched a... Um, youth discipleship group on a Thursday after school, which is going really, really well, um, and they're meeting in Costa. But, um, and as you know, Heather is going to have an operation on the 10th, so if you could be praying for her swift recovery so we can have her back, um, because she's gonna be deeply missed. Um, so that's pretty much everything um, in our children's and youth. Oh yes, Messy Church. So Messy Church, we had the Holy Week Messy Bags and myself, Heather and Claire did videos that week. And then we are having a Coronation Messy Church on the 15th. So if you can pray for that, that would be fantastic. Our school's work is developing lovely. Um, so we're in St. Um, St. Thomas's and we are in St. James, both doing um, children, uh, our collective worships, and then on lunch times once a week, we join St. James with their um, worship crew, looking at prayer spaces and collective worship, so developing those young leaders, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Sandra to talk a little bit about our Ukrainian stuff. Hello, I'm Sandra. I just want to announce our uh, events, which will be in May. We continue our Monday evening meetings with sponsors and Ukrainian guests. On the first Monday, it will be a meeting dedicated to housing relocating with uh, Dean Granger. And also, it will be Mary Simpson, the Health Watch Coordinator. And we will talk about healthcare and everything like this. On 8th of May, Monday, we will be we will be having a Zoom meeting on 15th of May. The topic of our evening meeting in person is the education in the UK, which might be useful for youth and their parents. Uh, and I would like uh, to invite everyone, all sponsors and Ukrainian guests, to our new series of events, which calls um, 
get familiar with Hereford. And the first one will be Hereford Cathedral Tours. It will be two tours in um, Tower, Hereford Cathedral Tower 2, and Mapa Mundi and Janet Library, which will be held on 27th of May. Everyone is welcome and see you on Monday. Yes, now if you can continue to pray for your Ukrainian project, myself, Tom, Andy, and Sandra, um, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra and Jerry, for that. We'll pray about some of those things a little bit later on, uh, but now I'm just going to give us our Bible reading, uh, which comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, it's, um, the first chapter, verses 24 to 29. Now I rejoice in what was suffered for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. And to this end, I labour, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. Powerful words there from Paul, written to the Christians in Colossae. And we're going to hear from Mark now as he unpacks that for us. Hi, my name's Mark, and uh, you may not know me, but it's lovely to be with you today. Uh, Lindsay and I have recently started attending St. Peter's and St. James, and um, I get the privilege of sharing today. Um, we're not at church every week because um, I work for the diocese. My role is to encourage mission up and down the diocese. And as there are 403 churches, I think, um, we... Uh, won't always be at uh, church in Hereford, but it's great to have a base there when we are there. I want to share just a few words this morning about this reading from Colossians 1, because it's a passage that has something rich and deep in it. And um, what it describes as, Paul describes it as a mystery revealed. And uh, I'd love to reflect on that today. Um, words are powerful, aren't they? When someone says, I love you, it can change the direction of your life. When we are built up, we change. We change as people when we're encouraged. We are uh, empowered to do more. Words can have a positive effect, but words can also have a very negative effect. When we're torn down or undermined or got at, we can, we, we can in ourselves go into a place of um, uh, anxiety or uh, and mental health issues even at times. Words have such power. I wonder if you can uh, help finish some of these slogans with me. Uh, Nike, just do it. I used to be in marketing before I came into ministry, so I love this sort of thing. Or L'Oreal, because you're worth it. Tesco, every little helps. I hope you're doing these with me. KFC, finger licking good. What about Pringles? Once you pop, you just can't stop. Or Kit Kat, have a break, have a Kit Kat. And what Paul does in this passage today is he uses seven powerful words. Um, and the NIV brings those seven powerful words right out to the front for us. Just before we get to those, I, I wonder if you enjoy watching detective programmes. I love them. Um, Death in Paradise is one I found uh, during lockdown. Uh, I could not believe how many um, episodes there are. I haven't got through that many, but I, I love that program. Um, and what I love about it, and um, NCIS, that's an American one, but what I love about it is that, is that, that people gather all the evidence together and then at the end there is this 
great reveal in Death in Paradise. They they get everybody together at the end who's part of the crime scene, who could possibly have had something to do with it. And then there's the great reveal. Um, uh, the person who is the perpetrator, the, the criminal that is is revealed in front of others. There's the great reveal. And that's what our passage is about today. It's this great reveal. It comes after um, an incredibly powerful um, statement of faith in Colossians. It's um, one of the oldest potential hymns they talk about or statements of faith in the Bible. And um, it shows us what God has done to reconcile the world to him through Jesus. Just listen to these words for a few moments. The Son, this is chapter 1, verse 15. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross what Paul is saying in this incredible statement he's saying have faith have faith in the person of Jesus Christ what Paul's trying to share is the strong and secure faith that he has in Jesus himself and so he says in our reading now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I've become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in all its fullness. Paul is somebody who's got this incredible confidence in his faith in Christ. And he says, I've come uh, to reveal this to you. I've become a servant of this um, message that you might know the fullness of life that can be found in Jesus. And I offer myself as a servant to you, he says, to the church. Um, he says, and I'm called to serve you with the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations and is now disclosed to the saints. I love that. I love that word. Notice he doesn't say is now disclosed to the sinners. He says it's now disclosed to the saints. What a challenge that is. You are a saint. You're not a sinner. You're a saint. Christ has, has done something really important with you in your life. I want to illustrate this just in a little way. Here's, um, uh, here's you or me, this little paper, and here's Christ. And this is what Paul says. He repeats it in lots of his letters. He says, our lives are are hidden in Christ. That's us in Jesus. So in other words, we are safe and secure in him. When you became a Christian, your identity changed. You became in Christ and you can be confident that God has got you. That's what Paul bases his confidence on, that he is in Christ. He is safe and secure. God is with him for all time and all in all things. He is hidden in him. That's what makes us, in Christ, saints, not sinners. Now, I know some of you may have some issues with that with me and say, but theologically speaking, if we truly understand the full mystery of Christ, here's what happens. Our lives hidden in him mean that our sins, past, present and future, are forgiven because we are in him. We have a new identity. We are no longer that our old selves but we are a new self. And so Paul writes to not sinners, but saints, people who've been restored and renewed. And he writes to us as members of Christ's body. This is how he sees us, hidden in Christ. A change of identity. But that isn't the mystery of this passage. There's more to it. 
because he says that that's just the mystery that is now disclosed. So what is this mystery? Here's what he says. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. They are seven powerful words. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Talk about belt and braces of the gospel. Talk about God always being with us. What does Matthew teach in 20, Matthew 28? It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Christ in you, in me, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That is the mystery, that Christ is in us. So, so I'm, I'm like giving you two images in one talk, and I know it's quite difficult, but we are hidden in Christ. We have a new identity in Christ, and Christ is in us. And therefore, wherever we go, Christ goes with us and so he says i'm sending you out to make disciples of others and i am going to be with you so we can be confident and secure or in our faith in god because god is in us and we are in him a lovely lady came to the church that Lindsay and i used to lead and um our uh, youth had done some outreach and they had cleaned the cars all down one street. They'd gone in and knocked on the doors and said, can we clean your car? And people said, what for? Um, and said, we're just from the local church. We're going to bless the community. And they'd gone around cleaning the cars. We used to do that sort of thing. We'd visit the businesses. We'd um, knock on doors and give treats on, on uh, All Saints Eve, Halloween. We wouldn't do the tricks. We'd just do the treats. We'd do that sort of thing. And um, this lady came to church and uh, when she came in, I noticed that she'd come in at the back and um, she started crying in the worship. Um, uh, I thought that's interesting. <laughs> no, didn't particularly pay much attention to it. Then when I stood up to speak, she really started crying. And I was getting a bit, feeling a bit insecure at that point. I thought, gosh, is my talk really that bad? Um, uh, and at the end of the service, I went up to her and, and uh, said, hey, are you OK? Bit of a daft thing to say, I know, don't tell me. Um, and she said, I don't understand. It's the moment, since the moment I walked through this door of this church, I started, I started to cry. And I said, well, what brought you to church today? She said, my dad died and I've come to find a little bit of peace. But something changed when I walked through the door. And uh, she seemed keen to go, but I said, I think it's the spirit of work. If you want to come back, we can talk more next week. Um, anyway, she came back uh, the next week and uh, I noticed her come in and as the worship started, I looked round and sure enough, she was crying again. To end a long story, she came to faith and she came to faith because she found a group of people in whom Christ lived, whose lives had been changed and whose lives were hidden in God and therefore were confident and joyful of their life in Christ. So often people get anxious about sharing faith and I think they, they think they've got to find the right words. Um, you know you don't have to find the right words at all for anything, no Christian does. We're reminded in the Bible the Spirit will speak through us, the Christ in us will give us the right words or actions at the moment we need them for when we need them. It seems to me that Jesus simply invited people to walk with him, to talk with him, to do life with him, and often he prayed for them. And perhaps one of the greatest ways that we can share faith is to allow the Christ in us to shine through in who we are and how we are and what we do it's part of our witness to celebrate christ in us and us in him
and we therefore let Jesus do the work for us. We can have a confidence of our life in Christ. I want to finish with this little story. This is a story about a Rwandan man in 1980 who was forced by his tribe to either renounce Christ or face certain death. Um, he refused to renounce Christ and was killed on the spot. The night before he died, he'd written this commitment, and it's called The Fellowship of the Unashamed, which was found in his room and is recorded in Bob Moorhead's book, uh, Words Aptly Spoken. He says this, I am part of the Fellowship of the Unashamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees and colourless dreams and chitsy giving and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits or popularity. I now live by presence. I lean by faith. I love by patience. I lift by prayer. I labour by power. My pace is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions few. My guide reliable. My mission clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, diluted or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ and I must go until heaven returns, give until I drop, preach until all know and work until he comes and when he comes. He will have no problem recognising me, for my colours will be clear. Friends, it's a wonderful mystery that has been revealed to us, that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And I pray for you today that you would know the Christ in you and you in him and would have confidence in who you are in Jesus. Father, bless each one who listened to this talk online. And may they know now your spirit upon them, your presence filling their room, and your love overwhelming them. Give each of us, Lord, the confidence that Paul had of our lives hidden in Christ and Christ hiding in us. Amen. Thank you for that, Mark. Lots there for us to hear um, and to dwell in really richly. Um, next week, we're going to be continuing our series on witness. Um, and I think you might have the joy of listening to me next next week. So, you know, and that's in person and uh, online. So next Sunday, we've got um, various things going on in our churches. We've got uh, morning services and all, th all three of those, 8.45, 10 o'clock and 10.30. You'd be really welcome in person. Our 10.30 is our all-age communion service. 10 o'clock will be a morning worship at St. Peter's. And the 8.45 is the more formal communion service at St. James. Um, and access our youth stuff, everything else, all of that's going on. But as you heard from Jerry and Sandra, there's so much going on there. A big thing that's happening for us at the moment um, is uh, Heather, who uh, was doing the filming for us earlier on. She's going to go into hospital in a week or so's time. So we just want to pray for her, for, for, for that. It's a planned operation, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, with all these things, someone has an operation, they're out of action for a bit. So uh, and pray with us for, for her and for, for us. Um, for good and swift healing for her. Um, and Andy, Andy Morgan, our, our, our minister here, our vicar here, he's going to be taking three months off later on uh, towards the end of May. So we might see him online just before he goes, um, but you won't be seeing an awful lot of him over the summer. But now let me pray 
uh, for you uh, and bring those things that we've just heard shared uh, by Jerry and Sandra into our minds as we pray now. Lord, we thank you for the team that you have put in this place and we thank you for the team that we are all part of. We thank you that you commission every single one of us to be your witnesses, to be your saints, to be part of your body. And we pray that we would hold the mystery of who you are in our lives and make it known to those around us. We pray for our work with different people, of different ages and different backgrounds, the young, the old, uh, the impoverished, the wealthy, those who have lived through all those li their lives, those who have come here uh, it's caused by war and conflict. We thank you for the joy that it is to be a part of your body serving you and we pray that we might know you in all that we do and show you in all that we do. We pray for those who are either unwell or having surgery or have planned to have those uh, procedures. We pray for the wisdom and the knowledge and the care and compassion and the energy in the medical staff uh, and all the work that they do in our NHS and those who care for others, whether they're paid or volunteers in homes elsewhere. We thank you and we bless you with our prayers today. Amen. Thanks for joining with me this week. Go well. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Bye now.